my goodness, guys. I don't think I've ever seen this. Is the new M3 Pro MacBook a disappointment? Because Apple actually downgraded four separate things with the M3 Pro chip. So today, we're gonna do a real world test comparing all of the differences with different programs and real world tasks. And answer the question, should you just buy a discounted M2 Pro MacBook Pro for a lot less or get the new M3 Pro. But first, I wanna take a look at the design because this is the first time that I am seeing this new space black color. And let me tell you guys, this thing is gorgeous. Now, some people are complaining that it's not black enough. And under the studio lighting, it does look brighter than a dark black color, but in other rooms, it does look nice and black. And I think it looks amazing. And with that, we have the MagSafe cable where it is color matching on the aluminum and then the cable is black by itself too, which looks super nice. Whereas with the space gray, you have the aluminum matching and this is kind of like a very light, almost white gray. Now, as far as the displays, they are practically identical. The only difference is that the M3 Pro actually hits 600 nits and SDR compared to 500. So you get a little bit more brightness. Now, as far as speakers, Apple didn't mention any differences, but some years they do make changes, sometimes for the worse. So let's go ahead and compare them. I don't know about you guys, but to our ears here, the new M3 Pro actually sounds a bit quieter than the M2 Pro 14 inch. And we have seen that in the past, Apple toning down uh, the speakers by a bit. So that is a little bit weird. Now, as far as webcams, this is the M2 Pro's 1080p webcam and studio quality microphones. And we will see if there's any difference. And this is the M3 Pro's 1080p webcam and studio quality microphones. And with the M3 Pro, we have a new image signal processor. So you guys let me know, does it look any better? And do the microphones sound any better down in the comment section below? And now I unscrewed the bottom covers and I wanna compare the differences that we have. And looking at it right away, the first thing I notice is that the heat block on the M3 Pro is quite a bit larger than on the M2 Pro. It no longer has a smaller section with this little pad and overall it is much bigger. And that could mean that we're gonna have better thermal dissipation for the more powerful M3 Pro chip. Now with that, if you look over here, the M2 Pro has a single NAND memory chip, but there's three more slots that are not used. Now this one does have another one on the bottom side of the motherboard, but with the new M3 Pros, they got rid of four of the channels that were available. So now we have just these two and two more on the back. So we have four channels instead of eight. And that is why the M3 Pro can no longer get eight terabytes of RAM like you could in the past. You have to get an M3 Max. And now let's test that SSD performance difference. But first, I wanna show you guys that both of these laptops are at 100% battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug both of these and we are gonna be doing a battery life comparison throughout all of these real world tests. And one thing to know is that this machine is running at 600 nits because we have that capability. And now let's go ahead and do our SSD speed test. Both these are 512 gigabyte machines. And wow, look at this guys. We have 4,200 compared to 3,300. That is a nice boost in write speed. And as far as read, we have 4,600 compared to 2,900. So even though we still have two of those NANDs, they are fast and that is a great thing. Before our next test, I wanna show you guys the new performance leather case made out of genuine waterproof German Heinen leather from our sponsor, Bandwork. It's got this beautiful two-tone design in a bunch of different colors with clicky aerospace grade aluminum buttons and camera bump housing for incredible all-around protection with grippy indented sides making it easy to hold and a super soft plush microfiber lining on the inside as well as MagSafe magnets built in. And you can 
order one today by using the link in the description with code MAXTECH23 for a free one ounce leather balm. And now I have Geekbench 6 opened up right here and the first of the downgrades is the fact that the M3 Pro now has 37 billion transistors compared to 40 with the M2 Pro. And if that doesn't mean anything, this is actually the first time Apple has ever released a new chip that has less transistors than the previous one. And the M3 and the M3 Max both have way more transistors than the previous versions. Let's go ahead and run this. And if you noticed, the M3 Pro has 18 gigs of RAM compared to 16, and that is because Apple is now using three sticks of six gig instead of four of eight. And that is the second issue that we are having where we now have 150 gigabit per second bandwidth compared to 200. So the bandwidth is actually 25 times less for the memory. Now running this test here, now I see that the M2 Pro is running at 3.5 gigahertz Whereas this one, the highest is going is 3.78, whereas Apple advertises as 4.05 gigahertz, but we're not seeing it hit that at all, almost like it's a very rare case that it could do so. All right, guys, we have our results, and in single core, we have 3,107 compared to 2635. That is an 18% increase, even though we never saw four gigahertz in the test, which is advertised, and that is where it should hit it. Whereas the M2 Pro did hit its advertised 3.5 gigahertz. And as far as multi-core, we have 13,692 compared to 11,911. That is almost a 15% increase in performance, and that is great, and it's kind of surprising because problem number three is that for the first time ever in the Pro chip, Apple decreased the performance cores. So for the unbinned M2 Pro, we actually had eight performance cores. Now with the unbinned M3 Pro, we have six, two less cores, and they gave us efficiency cores instead. But with these base models, we actually have five performance cores on the M3 Pro compared to six. So that is a downgrade, but the overall performance still went up. And now let's compare the graphics performance running metal for compute tasks. And as you guys see, we have 14 graphics cores compared to 16 in the bin model. And that is the fourth downgrade. We've never seen Apple make a new chip that has less cores. And if you look at the power usage, the M3 Pro hit 18 watts peak compared to about 23. So it's using less power now. And oh my goodness, guys, I don't think I've ever seen this. Our new M3 Pro has worse performance in terms of graphics than the M2 Pro, 68,900 compared to 75,600. That is almost 10% less graphics performance on a brand new machine. And this accounts for a wide variety of compute tasks if we look down everything that is actually being tested here and that sucks. And the only reason Apple would downgrade these is to make the Max chips seem better, both for CPU and for GPU. Now we have a bigger separation between them. And you can buy this thing on sale for roughly 1600 bucks compared to two grand. We have links down in the description. And now I have 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme opened up right here. I'm gonna run the unlimited mode. So it's not limited by the displays. And look at this guys, thankfully, we actually have a better score with the M3 Pro, 72.4 compared to 66.9. That is an 8% difference. And it is sad to only get an 8% gain, but at least it's not losing. And this shows that for gaming, Apple has updated certain things to make it quicker. Of course, we have ray tracing support now, but for general compute tasks, we saw that decrease. And now I have Figma opened up right here, a web-based application. And this is a project by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. And as I'm zooming in, everything is nice and smooth. Let's zoom in here. Everything's refreshing super quick to get those high resolution images. The M2 Pro is also nice and smooth. And now I have 12 of these high resolution layers selected and I'm gonna be exporting them. So let's go ahead and start my timer. So the M3 Pro took a minute and 21 seconds compared to a minute and 38 on the M2 Pro. And that is a difference of 20%. And that is a nice improvement. And now I have Logic opened up right here and I'm going through the settings to enable the best performance. And one thing I noticed is that Logic is not using efficiency cores. So here we have six performance cores compared to five. And those efficiency cores are now really powerful, more powerful than before. but 
this might not be even using them. And now I'm playing back 128 tracks and you guys can look up the new Logic Pro benchmark and the point of this is to see what performance you can get and if the system was gonna get overloaded. And one interesting thing is that even though we have less performance cores here, we're only using 42% of the CPU to do 120 tracks compared to 51. So less cores is still able to handle more, at least for now. And now I have 150 running on both and the M3 just overloaded. Now this could also be because of memory, we have less buffer, but the M2 Pro is running 150 tracks. All right guys, we just did a bunch of testing and this is crazy. The M2 Pro handled 153 tracks compared to only 142. So the M3 Pro can handle 11 less tracks. You guys can look into the whole benchmark uh, if you'd like to, but we have never seen this where a new product, an upgrade, is actually this much worse in performance. And that could definitely be due to uh, RAM. The bandwidth is 25% less. Uh, and we know Logic, especially with plugins and stuff, does really utilize RAM. So if you use Logic, keep that in mind. And now I have Cinebench open up right here and we are gonna test the full CPU performance as well as our thermals for temperatures and fan speed. I'm gonna go ahead and start the multi-core 10 minute test. And looking at our CPU wattage, looks like the M2 Pro is running roughly two to three watts higher um, as far as the requirements. So this M3 Pro with more efficiency cores, as you guys can see, we have six instead of four. Um, that is able to be more efficient. Now the interesting thing is in terms of temperatures, we have 84 compared to 79, and the temperatures are rising up, but it looks like the M3 is heating up faster. And if you look right over here, our performance cores on the M3 Pro are about 300 megahertz faster, the efficiency are about 200 megahertz, so we have higher clock speeds. So it looks like the two extra efficiency cores are making up for one less performance core. And the M3 Pro just hit 104 degrees Celsius compared to 101, so it is running hotter. Now our fans um, have kind of spun up, and it looks like the new M3 Pro machine, even though it uses less power, it's running the fans slightly higher, but both these systems are nice and quiet. So it's been six minutes and I got out my thermal cam. Let's go ahead and compare the temperatures. On the M3 Pro, we're seeing 39 degrees Celsius where the chip is at compared to 44. Dang, we see actually a hot spot that's much smaller, whereas with M3 Pro, we had that larger heat block, so that is actually helping. And this is actually great news for the M3 Max, and I actually bought a 14-inch M3 Max, so we're gonna compare that to a 16-inch, and maybe this year, we will not see throttling like we have in the past in a 14-inch. If you guys wanna see that video, make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled. All right, guys, we have our scores. We have 865 for the M3 Pro compared to 754. That is almost 15% gain with the new model, and that is actually pretty impressive. It matches up with Geekbench, and that does show that those efficiency cores are doing some heavy lifting now. And now I have Adobe's Lightroom Classic opened up right here with 50 high resolution images. All of these are edited and I'm going to go ahead and export 50 of these. This is gonna use the CPU, the graphics, and it's really RAM intensive. It's interesting that this one's heating up quicker and as far as performance, it's using more of the CPU and GPU uh, consistently. And that might be something with the new dynamic RAM that Apple talked about or other improvements movements, but the M3 Pro is flying along. Wow, that was way faster than I expected. We're waiting on the M2 Pro. Guys, the M3 Pro did that in 45 seconds compared to a minute and six. That is about 47% difference between the machines, and we were not expecting that at all. My goodness. And to put into context, the new M3, that's 1600 bucks, if you upgrade that to 16 gigs of RAM, that will take a minute and six, which is just what we got in this machine, and 45 is just crazy fast, so that is crazy. This M3 Pro is gonna be great for photo editors. And now I have Blender open. This is the 4.0 beta, which is starting to use the ray tracing cores in the M3 Pro. And we are gonna go ahead and render this tough scene. Guys, this thing is flying. It says we have 54 seconds remaining. Uh, compared to here, over two minutes. Guys, it just got done. This one is at sample 88 out of 200. 
Man, that is crazy and a great improvement. So we have two minutes and 13 seconds for the M2 Pro and 57 seconds for the M3 Pro, more than twice as fast. That's what, closer to two and a half times faster? Somewhere in that range. That is incredible. And what an update if you do 3D design and rendering. And now I'm gonna run Cinebench's new graphics benchmark to render using the GPU. This is the first time we're ever testing this. And oh my goodness, guys, I was not expecting this big of a difference. This must be using those ray tracing cores as well because we have 2,821 compared to 5,526. That is almost double the performance right there. Um, pretty incredible. And what's crazy is if you look over here, this 14 inch laptop is scoring almost as high as an M1 Ultra Mac Studio, which that thing is what, double the price, more than double the price, depending on that spec. Crazy man. That is pretty incredible. I can't believe it. And now I have Final Cut opened up right here and I'm doing this five minute export that has some effects. And as you guys can see, it's running at the same exact time. And even looking at the CPU and GPU usage, they're pretty much stacking up. And that took two minutes and 20 seconds for that project, just like the M3 and even the M2, because the encoders are the same. And because the performance and graphics is roughly the same with some optimizations, for regular editing for most people, you're not gonna notice any difference. And because of that, I have this very tough AK ProRes project. As you guys can see, it's gonna be 75 gigabytes for this save. I just wanna throw something at it that is very difficult to see if we have any differences. And look at this, guys. We're at 17, 18% right now. They're literally identical. And as far as the graphics and CPU usage, it's fairly similar. This is mostly graphics uh, related to do all this processing. Um, and man, they are way close. All right, guys, that is done. And the M3 Pro actually beat out the M2 Pro by four seconds, both of them a little bit over four minutes there. So with that said, if you're a video editor, even for tough tasks, if you wanna save about 400 bucks and get the M2 Pro 14 inch discounted, you could definitely do so and you're not gonna miss out as long as you don't want this black color. And now let's talk about battery life. It's time for the moment of truth because we've been shooting for many hours even though this video is cut down. And let's take a look at the M2 Pro. This thing is at 13% battery life remaining. Uh, it's getting low there. And with the M3 Pro, we have 27%, more than double remaining. And I will say there are some times where we have to download some programs on here or re-download them because they weren't working. So in reality, maybe it would have been at 30% if we didn't have to do that. And we had the screen turned up to 600 nits as wow, well. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. We did. Um, that is very impressive in terms of battery life. So those extra efficiency cores are helping and even though we have less performance cores, they also make up for the performance. And in some tasks, it made a huge difference, not only for 3D rendering and stuff, but Lightroom was 47% faster. That blew our mind. So I will say we here at Max Tech were wrong about the M3 Pro. Apple did not send this to any reviewers and based on their own announcement video, they said that the performance increases were the same over the M1 as the M2 had over the M1. And that kind of let us down. But in the real world, this machine is very, very nice. So if you're looking to buy a new MacBook, yes, you can save 400 bucks. And for some people that will be worth it. But overall, I would say that I would spend the extra money and for two grand, you are getting an excellent machine. It's probably gonna be discounted as well. Check out the links in the description below. I love the new color. And man, Apple has a great machine on their hands that most professionals will be happy with. Um, so we like it a whole lot. You guys go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. We're gonna have a lot more coming. This has been Max and I will see you in the next one.